In this video, we're going to go over the Power Geopack window layout. Basically, what all these tools are here at the top, some of these tools over to the left side, the right side, and also down below here at the bottom. So, we're going to go over all those tools kind of in our overview. We're not going to go into them into detail, but just kind of show you where they're at and what the use is for those particular options. Of course, at the top, you got your banner. This is where your file is located at, the current file that you have opened up what's a 2D file or a 3D file then also what version that you're running which is Power Geopack Select Series 4. Next we have all these pull downs across the top here and those pull downs are actually demonstrated in another video so I'm not really going to go over each one of those but that's where all the pull downs are located at. Next one we have some toolboxes that we have docked here that are commonly used. This toolbox right here is the attribute toolbar and basically what that is is whenever you draw an item out there right now like a circle or a line or text and stuff like that let's go and look at these attributes that you have set here at the top so that's what that is next one is your standard toolbar which just has some of your standard tools that you're going to be using as you use a product like new open save print cut copy paste undo redo and also the microstation help so that's what those tools are located at. Of course, all these tools right here, they're still located underneath the pull downs. You can get to those particular options that way also. The next one is your primary toolbar. And with some of these through here, um, like your models, your reference dialog box, your raster manager, and so forth, a lot of those tools are demonstrated in separate videos and kind of goes into detail with each one of those particular items. The next one is your annotation scale which that's where you'll set your annotation scale to whatever size your border is that way your text comes in correct your cells dimensioning and all that other stuff that is annotative driven so that's what that's located at the next two are more on the geopack or the civil side but just kind of give you an overview of what those tools are um, this is your feature definition toolbar where on certain geopack tools you have to set a feature definition before you place that item that way geopack kind of knows what to do with that element that you're creating so that's what that is and this other one is your design standards toolbar so if you're laying out on alignment let's say your your verticals or your horizontal geometry and you set your design standards for either a two lane road or a four lane road and also whether it's passing site distance or stopping site distance It'll actually get, kind of give you parameters and also throw up errors whenever you lay out the alignment if it if there is an error like you can't if it's not meeting the minimum for the site distance it'll give you a prompt saying hey you're not meeting the the minimum requirements. The next one that we have over to the left side here is your task, your project explorer, and element information. In the task, these are where all of our CAD standards are located at for your design CAD standards, your survey CAD standards, also your bridge CAD standards. Also, you're going to see all your geopack or your civil tools underneath there also. So if you expand that out, you'll see all the civil tools that are located there for using the civil product or what they used to call the geopack tools. So that's where those are located at. The next one is your project explorer. With the Project Explorer, there's some different tabs underneath here, like links, file, survey, civil model, and civil standards. With the links, there's a lot of videos underneath there for help documentation, whether you're using the MicroStation fundamentals portion of it, or if you're using some of your civil tools, you're going to see a lot of documentation underneath there. So that's pretty helpful if you're wanting to learn how to use a certain tool, you can navigate down through there and select that particular subject that you're wanting to look at maybe like civil act draw and it kind of shows you what each one of those does same thing with some of your civil geometry your corridor modeling and stuff like that there's some videos or PDFs that are out there that'll help you out the file pull down that just kind of stores what is actually in the file so whenever you use a particular dimension style or text style it actually stores it in the DGN file now so that's where all that stuff is going to be kind of stored with the file and the good thing about that is, if it's stored in the file, whenever you send it out to someone else, or if someone else gets this project for whatever reason, all that stuff is stored in the DGN file now. It used to not be that way, but now they try to 
store all that stuff in the DGN file. That way, the DGN file is the container for all the information. Same thing with survey. If you're dealing with survey, you'll see some stuff underneath your survey field books. That's where you'd see some of that at. Same thing for your civil model and also civil standards. That's where it's pulling the standards from. And then element information. That's if you come out here and you select an element and you go to the element information. It'll just kind of give you, give you some information about that element. Whether it's a line that you've placed out there or a cell or text or anything else out there that you've placed. It'll just kind of show you some general information or maybe some other information about that particular element. Also to the right side here we have two toolbars. One is the MoDOT main toolbar which is just kind of some of the commonly used microstation tools that you'll be utilizing and those are all demonstrated in separate videos so I'm not going to go over those in detail. And then also down below here we have the old Geopack toolbar because there are certain tools that you'll still have to use in this product using the old Geopack tools. So that's where that particular toolbar is located at. And like I said, that's more demonstrated on the Geopack classes, so I'm not going to go into that into detail. Next thing that we have is your view toolbar here at the top. For like if you want to zoom in or zoom out or zoom to a window area, that's where all those tools are located at. Like I said, those are demonstrated in another video, so I'm not going to go into, into detail, but that's where they're located at. Down below here, you have your civil AccuDraw tools, which is a drawing aid to help you draw stuff and maybe at a certain distance or angle or maybe station and offset. That's what those tools are located at. You have your snap toolbar, which is down below here, and you can change your snap to whatever fits your need at that situation. And down below here, we have our status bar. The first one right here on your status bar, that'll show you what tool that you're using and also kind of gives you a a heads up prompt of what it wants whenever you're using that tool. Take for instance, like I just used the Play Smart Line tool. Whenever you select that, of course it loads up the tool, but down below here it says Play Smart Line, enter first vertex. So it kind of tells you what needs to be done to create that line. It kind of tells you what it needs to create that line. It gives you information about it. I'll enter my first vertex by left clicking. Now it says enter next vertex or reset to complete. I can left click again to keep going. And then once I'm finished with it, I'll right click to end it. And now I'm finished. So that's what that's used for right there. Kind of show you how to use that particular tool whenever you're utilizing it. So if you ever need any help and you're having problems using a tool, that would be the first place to look at. The next one is your MicroStation Message Center. You can look at that at your own leisure. It may store some stuff in here that may be needed for your project where you can come out here and copy and paste it. For like if you're measuring something, it may store it inside here and then you can copy it. That information into an Excel document. There may be some other instances that, that may be utilized, but just kind of show you what's been done with the file and some other stuff. Next one is your snap mode. Here's where you can go to your snaps and change your snap mode this way. Same thing for your snap toolbar right here. Next one is your active locks. So if you have a lock that's applied to the file, that's where you'd locate that at. Probably the one that you'd have checked on in here is the annotation scale. But there may be some other instances too where if you have a graphic group or an association applied to a certain dimension and stuff like that. That's what those are. Basically just some locks that are out there. This one right here is if you had some stuff selected in your file I'll just use my element selection tool and I'll just select some elements now you'll see that in that selection set we have 79 elements selected so that's what that is it just kind of shows you what elements that you have selected at that current time of course if you don't have anything selected that box will be blank the one thing to keep in mind with that though is if you're working with a certain tool and it's not really functioning the way you want it like you're wanting to move something and you're trying to grab a particular element and it's not want, wanting to select it the first thing to kind of check is down below here and make sure that you either have something selected if you want to have selected or make sure that this is blank if you need to move something while using maybe a certain other tool so that's what that is next one is your coordinates and as I move around you'll see the coordinates change as I move my mouse around so if I want to know maybe where a particular sign is at, I can actually snap to it 
and it'll actually give me the coordinates of it. And then last but not least is if the file has been modified. Um, one time that you may see on here is if you see a red X or maybe a red diskette. That means that the files read only. So if you ever see that, that's what that is. That's basically an overview of the MicroStation window and where some tools are located at. And like I said, most of these other most of these tools are actually demonstrated in detail as you start looking at some of the other videos that are out there. But this is kind of a brief overview of the MicroStation window where some of those tools are located at.